What's going on, game players? How are you guys doing? Man, I'd like to welcome you guys to the Analog Circle Podcast, episode 39. I'm your host, Keon Mitchell, and man, listen... I want to thank you for tuning in to number 39 here on the Analog Circle Podcast. Now, if you want to check out some previously, man, you know what? Hey, 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 look, listen, if you want to listen to some shows that was already done, okay, you can go over to SoundCloud, Stitcher, Radio, uh, iTunes, and Audio Mac, you know, all of that jazz. If you want to call into the show to uh, tell me how you feel, you can call in at 443-261-4607 or send an email my way. And I will be sure to read it on the show at the Analog Circle Podcast at gmail.com. Man, I got to get into it, brother. You know, you guys, I have bought two different things over the weekend. The first one I want to tell y'all about is Mafia 3. Okay, Mafia 3. It finally came out on Friday of last week on the 7th. This has been a game I have been very, very pumped up and excited to get my hands on. Now, let me tell you something, man. Did it live up to my expectations? Yes and no, I will say yes and no. First, let me let me just dive right into it. Splash. Okay, listen, man. The first thing I want to tell you guys about Mafia 3 is the negatives, okay? And the one big negative, if I had to come up with something that was a big negative about this game, I would say the graphics, Graphically, in certain areas, oh, brother, it struggles a little bit, okay? It looks like, uh, whew, it could be teetering on PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 at times. Only at certain times, though. Because there's other times, like during the day, when the sun is coming down and it's setting... And you can see it, like, actually bouncing off of the street. Oh, it looks great. Oh, man, it looks gorgeous. It looks so good, man. But other times, it's like, oh, gosh, man, you're struggling, brother. You're really, really struggling, Mafia 3. But overall, I would have to say that is the biggest biggest negative of the game. The cutscenes are great. I mean, the lip syncing with the actor actually saying the lines and the character actually talking, it is spot on. It really sells it. It's great. But it's other times in the game when the game is going on and you're looking at other people's faces in the city where you're going. It just doesn't have a lot of detail. The faces look bland at times where in GTA they have like they have some kind of definition in the face but with Mafia 3 it's not quite there but you know that that's the negative that's the only negative is the graphics now now of course graphics don't make a great game okay it it makes it look good yes it does but it doesn't make the game I want to get into some of the more positive aspects of Mafia 3. So so I just wanted to put that out there. If you were looking for GTA 5 levels of, of, of detail, you're not going to get that with Mafia 3. I'm telling you, that's not it. But what you will get, in my opinion, is a solid game. Let's go with gameplay because everybody needs that gameplay in the game to keep moving forward because it's fun, right? I got to say gameplay is on the one. It's solid. You take cover, you pop out of cover, you aim, bam, you shoot. That's it. Fun times. Really, really fun times, man. Different weapon types. It's great. A lot of weapons to choose from. The one thing I do like, though, is uh, when you're running low on ammo, as you move through the game, you know, you get certain things, kind of like GTA. 
GTA 4, how when you uh, met up with uh, Nico Bellic's cousin, uh, you know, he could get you a taxi anywhere. You know, you, you meet certain people, you get certain perks. That's kind of the thing with Mafia 3 as well. They took some things from GTA and just made it their own. And I want to say this. This game has its own own it has its own identity and i like it it is not jacking gta to me at all of course it's an open world so everybody's always gonna compare it to to a gta game i want to let you guys know in my personal opinion once again it stays in its own lane. It does its own thing. I get into that in a minute. But, you know, as far as the gameplay, the thing I liked was you could get this, uh, this ammo truck to come around if you're running low and you know you got to go into a, let's just say a situation where you need a little bit of firepower. To get you through, you call up the guy, he comes through with the truck, you can get the ammo there, you can get the weapons there, and you can handle your business so you don't have to worry about going to like uh, Nation Ammo, Ammo Nation that's in a GTA 5. You can actually have the dude come right there on the spot so you will have all of the weapons you need or the ammo that you need to get that situation completed. Outside of that, as far as the gameplay with the driving, it's solid, man. It's a solid uh, 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 driving experience. The thing I do like is they give you two options. You can either have it simulated. I didn't try that, you know, because it's a game. I want to have fun with the game. You can have simulation mode or you can have arcade mode. I've been in arcade mode. And the cars have, they have handled just fine. I've enjoyed it quite a bit it's been a lot of fun i've put in about i would say i'm teetering on 10 hours in this game i have not put it down since i got it it has been such a fun game you know it's been great outside of the the gameplay i would say let's go to the voice work okay because when you're telling a story if you want the story to come across as real you gotta have great voice talent let's talk about that for a second y'all the voice talent in this game man bro it is brother brother it is so believable. When, when this situation happened, okay, I'm not spoiling, no spoilers here. But when the situation happened, I felt it. I felt it in me, inside of me, in my heart, bone. I felt it. And I was like, man, you know, it, it got my blood pumping. It got me a little upset. And I was ready to go. You know, it's just the, the, the way... That the voice acting is just incredible talent, man. They, they really sell the storyline. They do. It's great. Ma matter of fact, that leads us into the story. The story, the way that they tell this story, dude. Oh, my goodness. It is very, very, very well done. It's flashback scenes. They're talking to various people about certain situations that happened. The intro of the game is, it is live, man. It is really, really good. It, it made me step back like, what, man? It's just really good. The storytelling is like, I don't want to ruin it, man, but it's very, very well done. Matter of fact, it's the story and the gameplay that has kept me playing this game. I got to tell you, those two things are addicting to me, to me. Now, keep in mind, I'm only about nine, maybe ten hours in. Now, the thing, the thing that I was telling you guys about the game having its own, its own identity. Now, see, the difference with Mafia 3 and GTA 5, outside of them both having the same publisher, which is 2K, outside of that, the thing is, is that in Mafia 3, Mafia 3, the whole game is based around you taking over 
different parts of the city, generating money from different parts of the city, having your associates gather around and giving them certain districts that they control. It's really like you becoming the Don, the boss of all bosses. That's like the undertone of the game, which to me separates it from Grand Theft Auto. Where you're, where, where the big picture is, you're the guy that's trying to run everything. And at the same time, you're going after this guy that is not ruining it. Because if you've ever seen any of the trailers, you know what the story is about. You know what he's trying to do. You know, so I think that that alone right there, just that bit of you wanting to be the guy, the guy that everybody comes to, the guy where if you got something going on, they got to go through you to get it cleared. Or if it's a problem, they send you, you got to clean it up. You know, I think that, you know, and then the underboss system, like I was telling you, having to make it so you can keep the guys around you happy, giving them the the um the uh, different territories that they want and you know, just making sure everybody is happy. I like that. It's such a good added on, uh, 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 not even a feature. I don't know. It's just a good add on to the game that makes it have its own identity. And I, I love that about the game. Outside of that, I would say the, um, what's the last thing I wanted to talk about here? Um, outside of that, the soundtrack. Oh, man. The soundtrack is a bomb it is dope it is a great soundtrack it really puts you back in that 60s era i mean the music is spot on with the time that soundtrack is on par with a gta soundtrack it is that good it was radio stations it was always a song that i could enjoy no matter what it was it was songs in there i had heard before and just such great classics i mean classic music the man that's a 10 the doggone soundtrack is a 10 it is just phenomenal I don't know how they got all these guys, but just great. You got to check it out, even if it's just for the soundtrack. But outside of that, you know, overall, Mafia 3, you know, with the... I want to also say this. I like the point that, you know, even though the world isn't as detailed as a GTA, you know, you're not going to get that. I want to just really drive that point home. You are not getting a GTA 5 level of quality with this game. You're not getting that. So if that's something that you wanted and that's a deal breaker for you, then this is not going to be the one. But I promise you, though, the other things that this game does, it does very, very well. I have enjoyed it thoroughly. It, you know, if I had to give it a score, I would say at this point, now keep in mind, I want to let you guys know this as well. I'm about nine, teetering on 10 hours into the game. I can see that some of it can get a little repetitive. You know, I'm hoping that as things move along, as you become, you know, as my character gets into more power, you know, and has more, diff you know, more territories that, you know, I'm taking over, that things will be a little different. But for right now, you know, my fear is that it's going to just be a lot of repetitiveness, you know, where I'm going to be doing the same kind of missions, <clears throat> excuse me, over and over again. I know we get that in GTA 5, but the situation with this is they are really like kind of like cookie cutter a little bit where they don't really differ from each other that much so that's the only thing i'm worried about but for right now is i you know if i had to rate it right now that game is sitting at a solid i mean solid 8.5 right now with nine almost 10 hours in it's an 8.5 i would recommend anybody that's been looking at this game pick it up 
it is a really, really solid game. You know, if you can overlook a couple of flaws, like I said, it was a couple of glitches too, I want to add, where I was uh, doing some melee attacks and I was slamming a guy and he literally slammed him through the uh, the desk. And when I say through, the desk did not break the the guy it was a glitch he just went right through so you know if you can forgive you know a couple of you know hiccups here and there which could be addressed in a patch in the future then i would recommend pick this game up it's great i've been enjoying it it has not let me down it's been a boat load of fun 8.5 for me right now man great game outside of that i actually picked up and this is, oh man, this is so dope. Oh my gosh. I picked up a four terabyte Seagate game drive for Xbox One. Four terabytes. I paid, um, this was on sale for $150 at Micro Center. And let me tell you, man, this thing, it's an external. Whew, dude, look. Look, if you are like myself, okay, you got a lot of games, you get tired of uninstalling one to install another one. Let me tell you something, brother. Look, I got, I'm using 141 gigabytes as it stands right now because I'm like downloading all of my games over again. So far, I'm up to 141 gigs. Do you know how much hard drive space I am using currently on this four terabyte? It actually has me down as using only 3.8% of the hard drive. 141 gigs. And I am only using 3.8. Now, I believe at the time, I had seven games on it that were installed. That was including Doom. I had Limbo, Inside, both of the Ori and the Blind Forces, UFC, Unraveled, and I think that was it. I think that was it. But uh, hopefully I didn't repeat <laughs> any of them. But um, I'm only at 3.8%. It is so easy to do this thing, man. All you do, you take it out of the packaging. It comes with the USB cable. Now, keep in mind, I still have the original Xbox One, the black one. And, you know, on the side, you have that USB uh, port, the uh, cable. I mean, not the cable, but the port on the side. I just simply took it, plugged it into that. When I turned the system on, it said, you know, it found it right away. It asked me, did I want to format it? You got to format it if you're um going to put games on it. But if you're not putting games on it and you just want it for music and video, you don't have to format it. I hit the format option. It formatted it in like 10 seconds. It was done. After that, you just switch. It automatically switches it over to the four terabyte hard drive where that's where all of your games go from that point on unless you tell it otherwise and since then man i have just been cranking all of my games on this thing and it is literally plug and play if you want to just go to a all downloadable future all digital and you don't want to go with the uh with the physical but you're worried about not being able to have enough room on your hard drive, this is for you. The four terabyte is amazing. It's a Seagate. Once again, it is made for the Xbox One. I know Seagate makes regular hard drive, external hard drives. I don't know about them, but I'm telling you, this is literally plug and play. $150, well worth the money if you have a large digital library, even if you have a physical library, because it doesn't matter. You still got to download the game because that is just the era of gaming that we're in. Highly recommend it. That is a 10. I have had no flaws with this thing. None. None at all. Matter of fact, I do want to, I do want to add though, and I'm running so long with this stuff. I do want to add though, that when I was playing Mafia 3 and I was downloading some of the games to the hard drive, it actually, Mafia 3 was playing like crap. It was like the sound had went out on it. 
I would run and then it would have to load. I would run, it would load, and then it just crashed on me. It did. It completely crashed, but it only happened when I was downloading the games onto the hard drive. So maybe that is a limitation of the Xbox One. I've never actually been installing a game while I've uh, actually been playing another one. That's the first time I've done it. So maybe that's something that you're not supposed to do, but I just want to let you guys know that did happen. So what I'll do is I'll just, nah, it, it happened more than once because I did it like three times just to check. And that might be something to do with the hard drive. It might not be something to do with the hard drive, but outside of that, it works flawless. I mean, per perfection. Man, I rambled on too much, but uh, let's go ahead, man, and let's go ahead and get into this gaming stuff, this gaming news, my friend, that went down. Now, if you're interested, I'm going to run through these kind of quick because I was very long in the tooth in that section, but if you're interested, you can play ReCore for free for the first 30 minutes. I mean, you know, a lot of us had heard eh, mixed things about the game. It's not a bad game. It's good, but it needs this and it needs that. And in low times along, if you want to check it out, but not spend that hard earned money on it, just go ahead and try it out for the first 30 minutes and see how you like it. Mastino Davis said he was a little cool off of it. Eh, it wasn't quite his thing, but moving on now for PC gamers. The crowdfunding campaign for Wasteland 3 has met its goal in three days. Three days this game earned $2.75 million. Now, $2.1 million of it actually came from investments, and $603,000 of it came from backer funding. Now, CEO Brian Fargo said, man, I wonder is he uh, in relation to Fargo Bank? That was so weak. Um, Brian Fargo said, we wouldn't be here without our fans and backers carrying the torch. And we want to continue to repay them by making the best role playing games possible. With Wasteland 3, we aim to deliver like never before. So any of you guys out there that are on the PC side that are in the Wasteland 3, you guys will be getting this game. How soon you'll be getting it, they did not say. But according to Brian Fargo, they're going to make the best game possible. They're going to aim to deliver like never before. Moving on to the next story. Now, Bandai Namco announced at New York Comic Con that Tales of Berseria will be released on PlayStation 4 on January 24th, and the PC version will be available through Steam on January 27th. Now, in Europe, the game will release on January 27th for PlayStation 4. Now, there will also be a collector's edition, well, a collector's edition copy on PlayStation 4 that will be limited to 10,000 copies. Now, this edition will cost $149.99 and will come with a Chibi Velvet and Le Le Leposet keychains. I hope I said that right, man. Le Le Leposet keychains um a music cd uh, i probably didn't i probably botched the heck out of that but um a music cd a steel book case and a 8-bit retro keychain now a start oh it's actually gonna also come with a starter strategy guide a art book as well as a prequel novel that is called A Witch's Tale now i have not really been into the tales of series since uh Tales of Vesperia, I think that was on the 360. I got to tell you, I hadn't been an RPG fan in quite some time, but Tales of Vesperia was pretty darn dope. I really enjoyed it. I had a good time. Now, keep in mind, it was just the demo I played. I didn't play through the whole game. I didn't. I can't lie to y'all like that. But when I played the demo, I was like, man, if I was into RPGs, if I had the time, to be into RPGs, 
I would get into this. It was fun, man. It was great. So hopefully you guys out there that are fans of the Tales series, you'll be picking this up. The collector's edition seems like it comes with a lot of cool stuff. And uh, hopefully it will be a very, very good game. Moving on now for you guys. Now this is for you PC dudes. Y'all just had a lot of news this week. Now for you guys looking forward to NVIDIA's GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. And I'm not talking about the rapper. You know, it's a rumor going around saying that it could release in January of 2017. Now, the graphics card will be unveiled by NVIDIA CEO Jen Swan Hung at next year's CES in Las Vegas in January. Now, the specs, and listen to these specs, though. Listen to the specs, man. The specs on the card are... It will use Pascal GP102 silicone, which is being used in a Titan X right now. Now, it's also rumored to have a 1.6 and 1.5 gigahertz clock speed, um, 3,328 CUDA cores. 1,503 megahertz base clock and 1.623 megahertz boost clock. Now, the 1080 Ti is expected to come with, listen to this, God, dog, this thing is a beast. It's It's expected to come with 12 gigabytes of video random access memory. 12 gigs, let's just put that, <coughs> excuse me, I coughed in your head, I didn't mean that, but let's just put this in perspective, the, the Xbox One right now, and the PlayStation 4 have 8, this thing is going to have 12, and I, I, now keep in mind, I don't know what this video random access memory is, I'm taking it that it's going to be the, 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 the memory of the card, 12 gigs, that's what I'm taking it as, maybe somebody could correct me, I could be wrong, but I'm not very versed in this uh, PC culture right now, but I can see by these specs, this is a monster of a card. So you guys looking forward to the TI, the GTX 1080 TI, you can just be on the lookout for CES next year in January for them to actually unveil this. NVIDIA, I think the, you know, I was at, I, like, like I said, I was at Micro Center this weekend. Man, I was just pricing video cards, not video cards, graphics cards, just to see how much these joints cost man you pc gamers got bank you hear me y'all got serious bank i saw a dog on gtx because somebody schooled me they said that that's the uh the um nvidia brand and the radions are the amd brand so i was over in the gtx side looking at things man they had cards for eight hundred dollars man i saw one that had a nine 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 on the daggone card i said man see this is why i just man as much as i want to jump in and i understand you got some lower level cards and all of that stuff i get that on the pc side but then you got the errors you got to deal with you got to deal with the patches if the um, well not the patches but the um what's the other stuff that y'all get all the time y'all talk about the mods and all of that stuff is it gonna break your con i mean your system or whatever i don't want to deal with that and, and i'm like inching very close to the pc side but it's stuff like that man that's just a lot of dough brother that is a lot of money even on the low side of the cards they were still like 229 230 i mean hey flash a news flash i can get a playstation 4 and an xbox one for like 300 dollars man 300 dollars and that comes with a controller that could come with a game or two, you know, it could come with, you know, a couple days of the service to get free games for those days. It's just a lot more simpler, a lot more easier for me. But you PC guys, man, my hat goes off to you. I tip it to y'all. You know, just be on the lookout for this NVIDIA card. This 1080 Ti is probably going to be like eleven dollars or $1,200, I'm sure. But I don't know. Let's move on, though. If you're not getting a PlayStation 4 Pro or Slim, but you want to get your hands on the new updated controller, well, guess what? It is available right now. 
on Amazon for $55.95. Now, the controller has a few updates. You know, one is a strip on the top of the touchpad and now lights up, which makes it easier for the camera to track it. Now, another feature is being able to send inputs directly via the USB cable. Now, you will also have the option of using Bluetooth, wireless, or USB wired connections. You guys might not know what, what I'm talking about at the minute, but uh, you guys remember just a couple weeks ago, they showed the new PlayStation 4 Pro. Now we all know that before that, we saw the controller that had the little light shining through at the top, you know, where the, the touchpad is. Well, that's the controller I'm talking about. You don't have to get a PlayStation 4 Pro to get this. If you want to have those couple of new features, you pay $55.95 as opposed to paying $3.99 to get it. Then you can get it right there on Amazon. They are available right now. Pick one up if you need it. A couple of revamps, this, that, and the third. Ah, not bad. Moving on. Now, Sony. Now, this is interesting. Oh, this is interesting. Sony has partnered with Green Man Gaming, which will sell PlayStation games digitally for 5% off now these include the bioshock collection the uncharted collection as well as uncharted 4 they also have ratchet which i would recommend uncharted was 4 was a really good game ratchet and clank which i would highly recommend that game was whoa that was a 10 that was a perfect game i had no qualms with that that game was awesome that should be up for talk of a uh, game of the year i'm telling you, you might think i'm crazy but that game was that darn good it was freaking awesome um ratchet and clank the last of us remastered um uh, man how many of us have not played that, that at this point but uh bloodborne and more also green man gaming is offering three games for a dollar to people who vote in the golden joystick awards so if you want another option this is interesting this Sony is actually broadening their digital horizon. You know, th this could, I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe Sony is, I don't know what the big, what the big plan is, but we all, we all know that earlier this year, you know, Sony had brought the uh, PlayStation, uh, I keep getting that doggone thing wrong where they bought, um, uh, the, 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 um, the service for like a, um, billion dollars i forget the name of it it's just it's, it's it's escaping me right now and i can't get it together i've botched it but they um they brought it to the um the pc where you can um have it basically is games on demand playstation games on demand you have it there the guy kai service that's what it is guy kai service all of that stuff and they brought that earlier where you can play the last of us you can play god of war 3 you know along with various other games uncharted is on there i think uncharted 3 is on there and um you know it looks like they're really branching out trying to get as much revenue as possible and that is what it's about you get as much as you can you're partnering up with green man you get giving people 5% off just to get a little bit of buzz going. I think it's great, man. I think if uh, you can move it out to different venues, different places, kind of spread it out there, why not? But moving on now, it has been announced via Twitter. Yeah, via Twitter first by Phil Spencer that Final Fantasy 15 will support HDR on the Xbox One S when the game launches. Interesting. I truly thought that this would happen maybe later on down the line. But we all know that, you know, Final Fantasy got pushed back until, what's it, November 29th, I believe? It got pushed back. So maybe after they made the announcement, well, these developers know well in advance what's coming down the pipe, but maybe that could have been one of the reasons why it got pushed back because this is going to be available on day one, the game will support HDR. So very, very cool move on their part. I think it's great. And I'm looking forward so much to Final Fantasy 15. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be awesome. Man, one of the one of my most anticipated games of this year. Moving on. You know, you know, oh shoot. You know what, folks? Folks, it has been announced. Oh shucks officially 
that, man, this is crazy. I just found this out. That a brand new Beyond Good and Evil game is being worked on by Michael Ansel. I think that's his name. A-N-C-E-L. It can't be Ankle. You know, but I'm going to I'm gonna go with Ansel. Um, man, I know I botched it. Sorry, brother. But he is also the guy who was behind the original back in 2003. Now, the picture. Now, this is this is the kicker right here, man. Now, the picture that was shown was of a man which looks like uh, he's actually carrying a pig on his back. It is a pig. People are guessing that it's a young PJ. Now, you guys might remember PJ if you've played the the original. I got all tongue-tied there. The original Beyond Good and Evil, PJ was the pig. Well, in this it looks like PJ is on the back of a man, which people are speculating could be Jade's dad. Now, what if, bravo, okay, you know the gears are getting to turn. What if they are going to tell a little backstory about Jade's dad and PJ back in the day? Because, of course, PJ looks like a little, you know, young pig. You know, he's all smiling and happy. And his little hoof is up there on the guy's shoulder. Like, man, look at me. I'm here. Y'all see me. I'm a star. -er." You know, it it looks very, very interesting. So what if, you know, just just for a storyline, they start cutting back and forth. You know, with Jade going on her adventure, and then she gets to a point, and you know, it's like, PJ says, oh man, I remember this, we had went on, and I went on an adventure with your dad, and you know, then it does a flashback, and then you're actually playing as her father. I don't know, it could go a couple different ways, but one thing is for sure, if nothing is for sure, is that this game is officially being made, and they're having the same guy, the original guy working on the sequel so after god doggone man after 13 years of speculation of this game coming it has finally been official so we'll see how long it actually takes to make because you guys remember last year actually sometime with um oh man who's the guy that's behind full throttle you know, all of these names, they start just, man, they just start um going together. I can't remember his name, but he was behind the Kickstarter of the game that people got all mad about and um was saying that they didn't know where the money was going to. Anyway, him, he was talking to the guy. They were playing a game, and um he had uh, said, so what about, you know, um a sequel to Good and Evil 2. And he was like, um, well, you know, we've been working on it. Tim Schaefer, God dog it, Tim dog on Schaefer. Him, somebody probably yelled it. Thank you for yelling it. Um, Tim Schaefer had actually uh, was talking to the guy and was asking him, you know, what about the sequel? And the guy openly said, man, you know, we're working on it. It's just, man, it's, it's just, you know, people are really expecting a lot. We want to deliver this, that, and the third. And, I mean, it just was said in just a regular conversation. So a year later, basically almost a year to the date later, they're uh, confirming that this is real. So I'm very excited about this. I played Beyond Good and Evil. It wasn't really my type of game. But then again, I only played it for an hour. And then I was on to something else. So maybe it could have been good. But I don't know. I don't know. But uh, actually, I'm sorry. It was uh, it was originally released in 2003. Okay, that's not when they had said the sequel. I think the sequel was... Uh, what teased at E3 like 2009 somewhere around there so about seven years it's been in limbo but now it's official let's move on good grief took too long now some more news about prey came out now you have now listen to this okay pray that's a game i'm really looking forward to because uh id software those guys they've been knocking it out the park not id bethesda they've been knocking these games out the park doom was fantastic i um only played the demo i bought the whole game but i have not played it yet so i'm gonna get to it eventually but um let's get back to this pray news now uh let's see now uh you have a choice 
whether the protagonist is male or female. Now, the decision to make Morgan you, either gender, of course, will not affect the story. Now, it's simply a matter of player preference, okay? The game is slated to release in 2017 for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and Windows PC. So anybody who was on the fence, you know, will I be able to be a woman? Will I be able to be a man? Guess what? You got the choice. You can be whoever you want to be. Okay, all right? So I just wanted to put that out there. You know, ain't too much more to say about that. Prey looks good. It looks great. They have a new trailer up um, that you can check out. Uh, Yeah. That's about it. Looking forward to it. Moving on. Now, the file size has been released for Skyrim Special Edition on the PlayStation 4. Now, check this out. Now, this is really, really different because the, uh, the, the, the hard drive space between the American version and the European version varies as to how much hard drive space it's going to take. Now, on the PlayStation 4 side, it's going to require 20 gigabytes of your hard drive, which unfortunately with PlayStation, you got to take out the whole hard drive. And I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm just not going to do it. Um, but, uh, it's going to take up 20 gigs for the American version and a 33 gigabytes of hard drive space for the European version. So they got 13 more gigs extra that they have to download over in Europe. I'm sorry, guys. God, dog. Now, for the Xbox One, it will take 17 gigs, which is actually 3 gigabytes lower than the PlayStation 4. Ver I tell you, they just cannot get the PlayStation 4 version together. I don't know. J just a PlayStation version, anything. I mean, at first, it was a thing about the mods. You know, they couldn't get that. And now all of a sudden, they, they're going to have mods. That is true. They're going to um, bring those over to the PlayStation 4. It was some kind of caveat with that that I've I've forgotten. It's not quite like the Xbox side. I think these have to be regulated on the PlayStation 4 side, whereas the Xbox side is still not really regulated or anything. Not 100% sure, so I can't really comment on it any further than that. But it's going to be 17 gigs on the Xbox One for the American version. And for the European version, it's going to be 25 gigs, which is 8 gigs more. Now, for people playing on the PlayStation 4 Pro, now, this was interesting. If you're going to pick this up on the PlayStation 4 Pro, you will actually be able to play, that's right, Skyrim Remake, yes, in 4K. Is that crazy or what? They're saying 4K, you will be able to play this game if you get it on the PlayStation 4 Pro. Now, if you weren't aware, this game is going to be released, Skyrim Remastered. It's going to be released on October 28th. For you guys looking forward to it, I am. I never played the original Skyrim, so this is a good point of entry for me to jump on in. October is a busy month. God, dog, you got gears coming out this week. You got you had Mafia 3 last week. Um, you got this coming out at the end of the month. Man, there's something else coming out this month too. Was it Titanfall, I think? Is coming out this month along with Battlefield. A lot of good stuff, man. Moving on. Mafia 3. Y'all know I was just talking about it. But this is for the PC side. Now, Mafia 3 on the PC is no longer locked at 30 frames per second. Now, this is coming via a patch, patch 1.01, that launched on Steam. Now, you can take it up to 60 frames per second or an unlimited frame rate. Now, the patch also touches up the keyboard controls, which have remapping options. However, the implementation of the patch 
causes previous keyboard remapping to set to default. So keep that in mind. Now, developer Hangar 13 said they will continue updating the game with new outfits, golden weapons, vehicle customization, and races. Now, these will be added via a free patch in the near future. Now, there's also, if you guys want to expound on the game, there will also be story content added for people who purchase the season pass for $29.99. Now, Hangar 13 are promising, they're promising three editions for season pass owners. So whatever that means, you're going to get three of something. I don't know if it means three extra story arcs. I don't know if it's three different packs of, for clothes and for guns and for, uh, I don't know, cars. I don't know. But just keep in mind, $30, you're going to get three additions to the game. Moving on now, Phil Spencer. Oh, Phil. Phil Spencer says that he wants to give gamers choice and wants to make it so you can purchase other games from the 360 digitally. Now, let me get into this. He, when, when, when asked on Twitter, when would we be able to buy Lost Odyssey digitally? You know, if you, if you didn't know, Lost Odyssey is actually available via backwards compatibility right now, but you gotta have the discs. You gotta have the physical media for it to work. But getting back to this Twitter question, he asked, uh, once again, when would he be able to buy Lost Odyssey digitally? Now, Phil responded by saying, we don't have a date yet, but something we want to get done. When asked about Mass Effect 2 and 3 and Blue Dragon being available digitally, Phil's response was, we want to give choice on how you buy your games. That would be our goal. Now, this is the thing. I got I got to point this out before y'all jump on my back. Now, Mass Effect 2 and 3, as well as Blue Dragon are not backwards compatible yet. But the thing about it is, is that he didn't deny that they're working on it. I mean, of course, he said, once again, his response was, we want to give choice on how you buy your games. Now, this could mean that these games, you know, because there are a few on the um, Xbox One store, I believe it's Star Wars Force Unleashed, is available um, via download. Of course, Red Dead Redemption is download, along with, um, oh man, Pac-Man, some of the Pac-Mans. I, I can't remember verbatim. I think even one of the Call of Duties is available um, for uh, download. But hopefully these games, you know, they'll uh, actually come to the spot digitally. And the thing that I've noticed about this, actually, it's a pattern with this. You guys probably picked up on it before I did because I'm just noticing all of these games that were mentioned are multiple discs. All of them have more than one disc. Mass Effect 2, Mass Effect 3, Blue Dragon, as well as once again, Lost Odyssey. They all have multi-discs. So um, maybe that's a reason why that's probably going to be a pretty poof, a pretty big file size, you know, having several different discs. So we'll have to stay tuned, man. Hopefully, you know, Phil is done right. In my opinion, he's done right by the Xbox community. You know, he's brought a lot of good changes to the Xbox One. I'm sure he's listening. And if it can be done, I'm pretty sure he'll he'll get it out there eventually but once again there is no word on when this is going to happen or if it's ever going to officially happen and once again want to point out mass effect 2 and 3 and blue dragon are not backwards compatible moving on now if you're going to be man the, the, yeah, you might want to listen up, guys. If you're going to be a um early PlayStation VR adopter, you know this is what's been being said. It's a couple things you might want to be on the lookout for. Now, you may want to consider the following to make sure there are no tracking problems with the camera. Now, according to a person over at GamesBeat, you get better results when you are playing in a dark 
room that doesn't have any mirrors or reflective surfaces. Now, whether the room needs to be dark for PlayStation VR to work, Sony explained that only certain lights cause problems. Ambient light won't affect PlayStation VR gameplay, but bright light sources directly behind the person using PSVR uh, light coming in from when okay let me let me let me let me redo that okay light is coming in behind a person using psvr light coming in from windows and room lights can interfere with the playstation camera and interrupt the tracking of the led lights on the headset so it is recommended to eliminate bright light sources behind the PlayStation VR player to get the best results. So basically, if you can, all of you guys that are getting the PlayStation VR, if you can, game in a dark room. Don't turn on any lights if you don't have to. Don't have any mirrors around where it can show different reflections because it's going to mess with your experience play it in the total dark if you can i don't know how uh, what's the word how how you can come up with that if you have some blackout blinds is great you know or if you can um kind of figure something out but just try your best to play in a dark room with as less light as possible I mean, I, I'm very interested in PlayStation VR. I am. I went and tried it out at Best Buy. Like I said, it was a fun experience. It was really good. Very comfortable. Very light. It was It was good. You know, it's just that price of entry is just, oh, that's a tough pill to swallow right now. So I'm going to keep my eye on it. I would love to hear from any of you guys that are getting it to tell me how you are liking your experience. Now, moving on to the next story, there are more rumors about the NX. Now, this one comes from the Nintendo NX subreddit. Now, when it comes to marketing the console, the phrase interact with your game on the go has been seen on a poster featuring the NX. So, this further cements, you know, it, it does, it further cements the fact that the NX will be a portable slash home console. I mean, otherwise, why would they say that? So, looks like that is going to be true. Now, as far as the pricing and the leak, the base model it's expected, which is interesting, because that means it's an updated, uh, upgraded model. But the base model is expected to sell for two ninety nine ninety nine, and a bundle of sorts is selling for three ninety nine. Now, as far as the packaging, which is you know what the box is going to look like. Wait a minute, I got to back up, man. Hold on. Okay, at two ninety nine. Do you think it can it can do that? Do you think Nintendo in this day and age, now keep in mind, I'm a fan. I'm a, I mean, heartfelt fan to Nintendo. I mean, true, I think they turned their back on me a little bit. But, um, you know, outside of that, I still want to see them succeed. But do you think that $2.99 is too high? Of a price because you have, see, this is the thing. Nintendo, they haven't proven yet that they're going to get that third party support. Whereas with, one, with, with the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, you know for a fact they're going to have the third party support at the same price point. That's the thing. And they're saying that this is not going to be any more powerful than a PlayStation 4. It's going to be on par with a PS4. So at 299, I understand that they have the the edge with having it being a portable console and at the same time a home console, 
But is that enough? I just, I don't know. But we're going to move into, into some more of the stuff that's been leaked about this as well. Um, as far as the packaging, now the retail source claims that the NX box will be slightly larger than the Wii U's box and features a white and blue color scheme with a simple design. As far as specs, the source says that 4K video streaming is a possibility, but 1080p and 60 frames per second are the alleged specs for games played on TV. But as far as the hybrid device, the rumor is it may max out at 900p, but it has not been confirmed. Oh, man. I, uh. I don't know, you know, 299, I'm not saying that it can't sell, especially if it can do 1080p 60 frames per second on everything. That's something that the Xbox One just can't do and something that the PlayStation 4 can't do with every game. So if they can do that, that could be a bargaining chip. That could be something they could also add into the added value. You'll get 1080p, 60 frames per second with our console. On top of that, if you want to take it on the go, you can take it on the go as well. And it'll, it'll just take it down to 900p, but you can still play the same game you will play at TV on a portable device. So they have a couple of ways they can flip it, a couple of ways they can, you know, sell it, but 399 when you're putting that up against the PlayStation 4 Pro that can do well alleged 4K not native 4K but like um Digital Foundry said when it's sitting still it's doing 4K it's when it starts moving it just is not 4K anymore but that says it's still a very strong console will the uh, what's it called? The NX be able to even give us that, which I am doubting because Nintendo has never been focused on power since the Super Nintendo, man. After that, that was it. The N64, it didn't, it wasn't doing it. It was not doing it, you know, but we'll see, man. 399. I mean, for Nintendo fans, I'm sure they'll go out, they'll support it. But man, when you got the PlayStation, pro up there with all of the third party support and the first party support i just don't know man let me know what y'all think but moving on from that story i mean it's it's really cool to hear that that that's possible but we'll see moving on news has been scarce now this is the last news story because man i've really ran a long time um news has been scarce about shinmu 3 but in July, and I only bring this up because, well, 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 I'll tell you guys in a minute. But in July, creator and director Yu Suzuki, which, man, awesome creator, by the way, offered a brief update saying development has taken off since the start of 2016. Basically meaning phew, it's off like a rocket. Um, But we still don't have confirmation of what the gameplay of Shenmue 3 will actually be or how costly it will it will uh it will um it will actually be or how costly it will match the two before it now the initial amount now listen to this the, the, i want to tell you guys this the initial amount that was needed from kickstarter was 2 million dollars right but it actually got funded with six million three hundred thirty three thousand two hundred ninety five dollars from coming way of sixty nine thousand three hundred and twenty backers but suzuki now this is interesting suzuki said it would take 10 million dollars to make a game a true make the game a true open world experience now wait a dog on minute suzuki hold on now how you know look i don't get into the theories i don't get into that stuff you know all these um theories people have where they're robbing us they're doing this they're doing that that's not where I'm at with it. But 
I have a slight problem with this, man, only because Suzuki, Mr. You, you knew that this game was going to cost $10 million to make it open world. Suzuki was doing open world in a way that had never been done back in, what was that, 99, I think Shinmu came out? 99, maybe 2000. Maybe 2001, so way around in there. But um, he was doing open world to a level that had never been seen before in gaming. But I have a problem with this because he already knew he was going to be two mil. Two, I mean, I mean, he was only, he was going to be eight million. My math was way off. Eight million dollars short of giving people the game that they were expecting. You think about Shinmu, you think about true open world experience, especially in 2016 with the technology that we have at the fingertips of developers. But listen to this though. Now Suzuki said he has long envisioned Shinmu as a multi-part saga. We all know that from back in the 90s. It was supposed to have been several different parts, so that's nothing new. But in a Reddit AMA last summer, he explained that he sees the complete story having 11 chapters, with each title exploring a handful of them over, I mean, a handful of them. Now, over the past 14 years, this is what he's saying. This is what Suzuki is saying. Over the past 14 years, I originally planned for there to be four or five games in the series. He said, if at all possible, I would still like to realize the full story of 11 chapters. And... The game is supposed to allegedly be releasing in December of 2017. Ele See, this is the... Oh, man, this is the thing, man. I got a problem with this. I do. You know, guys, you know I never really talk about this stuff, man. Not, not being negative at all, but it's just a bit of a problem to me because... Okay, we we understand Sony brought you out on the stage. Sony, you know, got the crowd hyped up. The guy was crying with his hand over his mouth in shock and, you know, couldn't believe that Shinmu was making a return. Now, the thing is, okay, you asked for two million. We understand two mil is not gonna make a game, especially not on the level of Shinmu. But you asked for two million. You got over six. Okay. Then you say, well, it's going to take 10 million to give people the game, the open world game that they want. Then after you say that, you say you want to, you had this vision. We understand you had this vision 14 years ago. Okay. That you wanted to make it 11 chapters long. Pete, let me tell you something, man. That is a nickel and dime. Now, I usually don't even say that, okay? Y'all know how I feel. I usually do not take that stance. But 11 chapters? Come on, Suzuki. I mean, 11 chapters. Let that sit in for a minute. Now, I remember playing Shinmu back in the day. Okay, I had Shinmu 2 on the Xbox. I didn't like it. I got to that tree part and had to catch the daggone leaf in my hand. I couldn't catch that doggone leaf in my hand. I said, forget it. I'm done. I ain't kicking this tree no more. I'm out of here. But I remember the original Shinmu. That game was not that daggone long. It had like five discs. It was an incredible game for the time. It was awesome. The Q, the what is it, Quick Time Events, QTE, you know, all of that stuff. It was cool. Nothing new. Dragon's Lair was doing it back in the 80s, so it was nothing new to the game. Nothing he was adding, but it was a good game. But you mean to tell me, Suzuki, you know what? I'm not even going to say it's a cash grab. Let me take that back off the table. I'm not going to say that. I'm just going to say that this this is just crazy. Okay, 11 chapters for a game. How many people are going to stay that invested in a game? How much are these going to cost, Mr. Suzuki? How much is each, each chapter going to cost? Are you going to do it like, um... I don't know, the, the Walking Dead? I don't know, are you going to do it like the new Batman game from Telltale? I don't think so. 
I don't think so, because back then he was talking about this being a long term trilogy. OK, so I don't think his mindset has changed. Shinmu might have been, I don't know. I don't know. What do y'all think it was? Maybe five, six hours at the time. It wasn't long. I mean, I beat the game in two settings. And that was like two short sittings. I beat the game right away. My homeboy, Mark Richburg, let me borrow it. I did it in like two sit downs. It was not long. So you mean to tell me, Mr. Suzuki, you have a vision of 11 chapters. Why not just give people the third game? People are already funding some of the game. Now, I understand you need the 10 mil. Maybe Sony will jump in. Maybe some investors will jump in. I know that the thing is, is with, with Kickstarter, I found out, is that it's just to, it's just to, to uh, test the temperature of how much people want your product. And once that temperature reaches a certain temperature, <laughs> darn that's stupid, I can't think of anything else on how to put it, but once it gets a certain buzz going, then it attracts the, the eye of other people, I get that, and you got that Suzuki, you got over 6 million, but 11 chapters is a lot of chapters, and I just don't know how many people are going to be in for the long haul for 11 chapters? That is an old school mindset of game design, okay? Of bringing out that many chapters. This is not uh, 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 anime like doggone um, Robotech or something like that. You, you, you just can't have a game go out that far i just don't agree maybe that's why we just have not seen any more information about dog on shinmu 3 now next year is coming december i guarantee you and if i'm wrong i've eaten crow before but i'm going out on a limb and saying that we are not gonna see shinmu next year it is not going to happen. I'm thinking if we see anything from Shinmu, it'll be another still picture. It might be a 30 second clip, but we are not getting Shinmu 3. And if we do get it, okay, I'll say I was wrong. But I just don't, I don't agree. That's too many chapters. We see that Final Fantasy 7 is trying to do the same thing. Well, they're not trying. They're doing it where it's going to be three chapters. But I can live with that. That's fine. I can live with three chapters chapters i'm cool with that that's no problem even if it's 60 dollars if it's a long enough chapter okay i can live with that i understand as developers you gotta eat okay you're starving sometimes your ribs are touching each other you gotta eat i get it you got bills but 11 chapters that's overkill i, I wanna you know what forget it I want to get you guys' opinion on that. I was going to ask you guys something else, but is Shinmu 3 going to make it into next year? And if it does make it into next year, I want to, this is a two part question. I want to ask you guys that. Is Shinmu coming out this, I mean, next year? And is 11 chapters excessive? Is that too much? Is that overkill? I don't know. I jumped the gun this week, but I had to get that off my chest, man. You know what? Call in 443-261-4607. Tell me how you feel. Email me. All of that stuff. But from this point, we're going to go ahead. We're going to take a break. But we're going to come back, of course, with my favorite part. And you know who wrote in. Oh, you know who wrote in. You already know. We'll be back after this. Stay tuned, y'all. And welcome, welcome ba -ba 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 back. Man, you know who wrote in, Mr. Cody Clark. He says, now this is the the uh, the, the name of his email. And by the way, we're in the feedback section of the podcast. God dog it. But we're going to read Mr. Cody Clark's first email. He says, this is the title. Oh, expensive games systems. He says, 
old expensive consoles. The Neo Geo was like $650 back in the 90s. The 3DO was $699. He said, I'd be totally fine to pay $700 for the Scorpio, but I doubt it will be that high. I'll be surprised. Of if it's over $500 now, which doesn't really feel that expensive slash premium to me. Who knows what will happen next? Now, you know what, Cody? I have forgot completely about this, man. I forgot that Neo Geo, oh my gosh, man. Now, now, keep in mind, Neo Geo, these prices are back in the 90s, okay? These are early, mid-90 prices. The Neo Geo, $650. The 3DO, $699. So, I guess, I guess you know what, Cody? You, you, you're right, man. It has been times where consoles have been so doggone expensive and 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 the thing is what do the neo geo and the uh the uh, the uh, the uh, 3do have in common bravo the, the only thing they got in common <laughs> is they did not go they did not go mainstream it, it was one of those things i remember seeing the 3do and I was like, man, I really, really want to get my hands on one. And I'd ask my mom, I said, hey, mom, you know, can I get one of these? And she said, you got to be kidding me. I'm not buying that for you. You know, it's not going to happen. So, you know, I never got one. But um, it is one of those things, Cody, where I guess consoles, it, it's not a new it's not a new thing to have these very, very expensive consoles. I, I tell you, you really, man, Cody always is teaching me something or reminding me of something because I really totally forgot that those even existed, man. So, you know, you, you, you definitely schooled me as, as always, Cody. And, and that's why I appreciate it when you, when you, um, you know, e email the show. It's always keeping me on my toes, so I, I greatly appreciate it, man. But um, outside of that, Cody had actually wrote in again with another email that I want to get to right. Let me let me pull it up. I'm pulling it up right now, Cody. Right now. Oh, shucks. Cody is getting on my bullet storm joint. He said, bullet sad. Now, you guys remember on the last podcast, I was like, oh, man, I can't wait. Bullet storm is coming back. I'm pumped up. I'm excited. You know, let's see what the world Cody is talking about with bullet storm. Let's see what the brother says. He says, bullet storm is a very bitter pill for me. Oh, shucks. He said, I was working at Mythic. What? I was working at Mythic when the game came out. I was pretty psyched about it because it had a lot of personality. Yes, it does, man. It really does, Cody. He says, sometimes we got freebies at work, but due to some mumbo jumbo, the game was not one we had access to as, as, as a freebies, nor was it in our company store which allowed us to use points from EA to get free EA games as well. That's right. It was published by EA. That's right. He says, my supervisor was the director of the department. So those upper end people got a lot of perks and he ended up getting a windows copy of bullet storm. Now he had no interest in it. So he threw it my way. I got it like six or eight months after it came out. I was one of those games it was one of those games on Windows things, so it was a Kodak bear of a pain to get it running on my PC. It was such a pain to get working on games for Windows. Oh, man, it was like trying to get blood from a stone. The next six to seven months, all kinds of bad juju went down at Mythic, at, at, at Mythic, my entire department had shade 
of the worst kind thrown at it, and it just went from being the most fun and silly place to work to being a virtual gallows and graveyard. God, dog. As much as I enjoy games, late 2011 to September 2012 is probably what killed gaming for me. Because of that, Bulletstorm just makes my belly rumble. Dang, Cody, man, I'm so sorry to hear that, brother. Jeez, let me let me just say, uh, by the way, man, I'm sorry your you, your job at Mythic got so bad that you, you know you actually said that it was like gallows and graveyard. That's what it was like. Dang, on. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Cody, but listen to me, brother. I'm telling you. Bullet storm windows. I, you know, I, I can't speak for it, man. It seemed like it really gave you a dag on hard time. I mean, Kodak bear hard times, man. But I'm telling you, Cody, it is such a good game, man. When it comes out on the Xbox one or the PlayStation four, or when they re-release it on the PC, maybe they will. Um, I would just say pick it up. It is such a great game. Even if you want to get it on the 360, it's like literally $2 right now at GameStop. It's 2 bucks. So I would recommend it's just such a good game. I can't say it enough, man. But Cody, daggone, please try it for me just one time. But Cody, thank you so much, brother. For always writing. And let me tell you, like I said, man, you are the heartbeat of this section of the podcast. So without you, man, it's a flat line. Just beep, you know, ain't nothing going on. So I appreciate it. But if you guys want to get your email read on the show, just like Mr. Cody Clark, once again, or if you want to get your voicemail, heard on the podcast you can call in at 443-261-4607 or email just like cody clark at the analog circle podcast at gmail.com man you know what i if you guys are still here with me right now let me apologize i feel like i really rambled on a little too long in certain sections of the podcast i feel like i i could have shortened up a couple things my apologies for you know not getting to the point as fast as i should have on certain um certain subjects so please accept my most humble apology i just think i ran on a little too long on this one but since I already asked the question, you know, will Shenmue release? I mean, will it even release? You know, let's just, let's not even say uh, 2000, December 2017. I'm going to just make it even more simple. Will Shenmue 3 release? Will it ever come out? That's what I want to know. And once again, if you want to, you can answer the other question the 11 chapters is 11 chapters too extensive and too much is that overkill to me i think it's overkill and i i just i don't think i want to play a game for 11 chapters that is a lot of darn time if if you're gonna give me 11 chapters give me 11 chapters in the game in the full game don't piecemeal me this stuff okay that to me, I know I said I wasn't going to call it a cash grab. I'm still not going to call it a cash grab. But to me, that's very excessive. That's too much. That's overkill. But with that, that's going to be the end of the show this week. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Analog Circle Podcast. Whoo, man. Oh, man, let me take a breath. Whew. Okay, that's going to be it. But I think we'll be able to do another one next week. So until next week when we do it again, you guys take care. Be safe out there. Bye-bye.